Hello and welcome. Well, did you know that scientific research confirms that playing outside is beneficial for children, their mental health and their overall happiness and development? Also, that children who spend more time outdoors just end up happy adults. And just don't we want that for all of our kids? Now, thinking back to our childhood, you know, we each have an abundance of memories enjoying being outdoors and integrating with the natural environments and elements of fresh air, the soil, sun, grass and trees. So, you know, if you're a parent who has continued your love of the outdoors with an adventuring spirit and you've just wondered, you know, how can I plan outdoor adventures with my infant or toddler or little one that is enjoyable for the whole family, you know, with a view, of course, of creating new memories, then you're in the right place. Now, today, we are going to share four tips for outdoor adventuring with infants, toddlers, and little ones with our special guest, Tiffany Drogue, now co-founder of Jumply. Now, their mission is to enable to build strong connections with your children through play and adventure and outdoor travel. Now, thanks for joining us, Tiffany. How are you? Good, good. Thank you so much for having me on. Very excited to um, <laughs> yeah, reach out and talk to all your awesome um, followers today about what we love doing and getting kids outside and you're right about just being you know bringing up happy kids happy families that's what we're all about a hundred percent now you and your husband Nathan love the outdoors so much that you created your own range of outdoor gear specifically designed to help support families and their outdoor adventures did you realize that I guess most of the baby products available in the market that they just weren't built um, for being used in the outdoors and weren't maybe as functional as just they needed to be. So I thought, well, why not? We'll just create our own. Is that what happened? Exactly. So after Tana, so she's now four, so the person our first daughter was born, um, we decided that we're like, look, this gear that we're buying, you know, out the the beautiful nappy bag, the tote style bag that we, you know, you're told as a mother, this is what you have to get to be a mother. You've got to get this tote bag. Um, so you're like, okay, I'll go get it. You know, I'll pay a couple of hundred bucks, if not more. I won't tell Nathan, I paid more. Anyway, um, to get it. And then I'm just like, this just isn't working. Like I'm a PE teacher by trade. I'm active. I've spent time overseas working in the snow fields. You know, I've always been outdoors, the beach and everything. And I'm like, you know, with a family, I just didn't want the adventure to stop. Um, just because, you know, I had a family and I didn't have the gear to be able to support me along that that journey too so I'm like that was sort of the the brief I'm like well why are we lugging this bag around it's not working for us and it was actually the epiphany moment I was um feeding tan one night and I just started grabbing a um a pencil and a paper I just started sketching the design for our first our backpack and I'm like okay it needs to have this <clears> and that because you know mum still needs their their <laughs> little mummy gadgets and stuff in the bag I didn't want to just design a backpack that you could get anywhere that wasn't what I was about I was about getting a backpack that also had the baby features mixed in with your outdoor bag. So I guess taking more inspiration from your outdoor stores than um, your baby, your baby brands is sort of where we kind of positioned ourselves. And it's just been rolling um, from then on. And we were like, well, there's got to be other parents out there too. that are just actually even want to be out with their kids and they just want to bag back and grab and go and they've got all that they need. So yeah, if that's, um, yeah, that's what to, I guess we've done. And it's just, you know, purely, Mum innovation, I realised that there was a problem with what was out there and I've just done something about it. And, and, and so many mumpreneur and dadpreneurs out there have, um, I guess, gone out to buy a product um, and or a service and they couldn't find it and just thought, well, if, if it doesn't exist, I'm going to create it. And I think it's inspiration for anyone watching and listening that potentially has their own idea that they're thinking the same thing for themselves as well because, you know, I think it's, it's, it's quite inspirational to see what you've actually done and taking that concept into a real-life thing that is now sort of helping and changing the lives of, of more families as well. So congratulations on that. I think it's really inspirational. So that's just, that's Thank awesome. You. <laughs> and, Thank you. Know, you. <laughs> and I guess, you know, in an ideal world, children should be spending much more more time outdoors just in general than they currently are as we know um, you know the introduction of technology over the years and our generation has definitely seen that being decreased and of course currently the use of screens has contributed to this a great deal so I just wanted to know just initially like what your thoughts are on on this overall it's a really tricky one look I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old and you know I own a business too and I'm going to be honest here, like, you know, when Chase goes down for a nap, my two-year-old, like, you know, I'll pop the tally on for Tan so I can get, get a bit of work done. But it's not, it's not every day um, as well. I think it's all about the balance, if there is such a thing as a balance. 
Um, and, you know, just having a bit of screen time and that. And the amount of stuff that Tan picks up from her shows, you know, quite educational shows. I'm like, yes. she knows stuff from watching that. So I don't think it's, it's, you know, it's all totally wasted time. And, you know, kids, you know, when they get to school, like she'll be able to do more than on an iPad than probably what I ever will know. So they're going to need that. And absolutely, to, you know, to be able to get jobs and stuff. So I think it's still important, but monitoring it and making sure that, um, kids aren't you know dangerous with technology I guess one thing you know being a, a PE, high school PE teacher you know we see with the sort of your sevens your eights you know you know knowing that they're, they're using their technology and stuff correctly for, mm -hmm. for proper uses um, so that would just be my thing you know monitoring what they're doing all the time and um, yeah it's but it's the world we, we're gonna well, live I think what you think you really touched on um, you know, a really key point that it is balance. You know, there was um, a, an interesting survey and in, in study um, not too long ago by Dell, you know, the computer company Dell, mm. um, and a large percentage, I think it was over 80% of the jobs in the future that children of this generation are going to be working in haven't even been created yet. So technology mm. is something that we do need to integrate and have into children's lives, but it is crucially about that balance. And this is mm. what we're sort of talking about today is, you know, on the flip side of the importance of kids understanding um it's just the benefits of out, outdoor play and how and, and and just being outdoors in general i think um mm. so i think you touched on a really important um point there it's just about finding sort of some form of balance i think that's really important mm. and you know but talking about the benefits of outdoor play they are widely documented um, and they're not only beneficial um, but they're crucial for children's healthy brain development so i wanted to ask you what do you think um, and, you know, why do you think it is such a priority to get kids outdoors? Yeah, great one. It's all about hands-on learning. Like yeah. if you, you know, you can show them pictures of kids playing in the mud or whatever, right? But to get that feeling, the squelchiness between their fingers, like that, it's that fine motor skill, you know, that they're getting um, with that and having sand run through their fingers, that kinesthetic feeling that they're getting is is super important and that you can't get you know, from, I guess, books and stuff and being inside, um, obviously, unless you're at a you know, indoor um, childcare and they've got that inside, <laughs> that's not what we're talking about here, you know, actually getting them outside into nature and getting them, you know, rugged, feeling that dirty, um, dirty feel. And also, you know, um, looking at their gross motor skill too, being able to run as fast as they can using their whole body. You can't do that inside, you know, climbing a tree, problem solving, you know, climbing up a tree, um, and those feelings of you know what they're doing and feeling proud of themselves when they're achieving these um, these tasks as well, I think is really important. And they're you know they're constantly um, having all these sensory experiences as well that you don't get from just sitting inside or yeah. playing you know with their their toys. You know the nature, the the the, the sounds that are coming. As I said, yeah, the dirt, sand, um, all that stuff's really important for them um, I to as they're totally having agree. embodied experiences. I think that they can't get inside. So getting them out um, is really good. And look, as you sort of touched on looking at their, their overall health, so looking at like social, um, their social health as well, you know, having a buddy to play with, even the siblings, like it's not sometimes enough to just say, yeah, go play outside. Sometimes they do need a friend or some encouragement, you know, all kids are different. Mm -hmm. um, so some kids would be happy to go out there and play for hours, just climb and climbing on one tree or playing in the sandpit, right? Where other kids, they do need that social. And social health is so important. Like we know, you know, moving, um, you know, through their lifespan, like social health <laughs> is really, really important there too. So it really touches on, yeah, social, mental, physical health, all those things. I like get outside and it's going to tick all the boxes. Not to mention, obviously, the really good health benefits, you know, looking at cardiovascular health, you know, decreasing obesity and um, yeah. helping, you know, that, that lifelong physical activity is what, you know, we inspire, <laughs> all PE teachers inspire to, you know, pass that on um, to kids. So then, well, you want an adult who's physically active getting outside, they're going to pass that on to their kid and then their kid's going to pass it on to their kids. So it's sort of that sustainability. If they're having positive experiences outside, it's more likely they're going to pass that on. So, Absolutely. And then we'll have a, a healthier world. Fingers crossed. <laughs> well, that, that, that falls perfectly into the Kiddiepedia mission statement, which is to be able to enable parents to be all they can be, to give it to their children so they can have the life they deserve, so they can then pass it on for their children and generations to come to, to build a bigger, better Australia. Well, that's our mission statement. So you've basically just relayed that back to us, which is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> same, same perfect practice. synergy. Love it. Perfect synergy. It's what we're about.
Absolutely. But you know, what you just said is absolutely right. You know, playing outdoors helps children with their fine motor skills, their hand to eye coordination, muscle strength, and just their overall health and well-being. Um, and of course, during this COVID era of our life, which we all hope is not going to sort of go on forever. This is just going to be mm. one stage, hopefully just a story that we are going to p- pass down through generations to say, this is what we experienced. And <laughs> there is an end date, but it's also, you know, being outdoors is, is a great social uh, distance activity as well. But, you know, products such as yours that promote physical activity can make a really big difference in the child's development. Um, and physical activity allows children to learn new life skills that involve like different types of movement and just physical activity. But I'd love to know, because you've got two kids. So, you know, did you notice that being active with your two children helped strengthen their bodies and just overall that helped their like uh, coordination to Absolutely. Yeah. Getting them out outside. Like if yeah. the sun's out, you're out. Like if it's not raining, you're out, out, you're out. <laughs> sun's out, you're out. And, and yeah, like our mission was just, you know, making everything easy. Parenting's hard, right? We know it's, it's you know, you have your days, you're like, oh, I just can't do it. But we just wanted to make parenting just 1% easier that you can just grab your bag, you know, it's packed, you know, out you go, just for a walk, chuck in the bottom of the pram or jump in the car if you're allowed, you know, whatever's going on. just get outdoors. On. And just get outdoors. And then we sort of, so we started with our, obviously our, our nappy backpack. And now we're sort of, you know, developing other accessories. They were like, oh, hang on, this would be really cool on your adventure as well. And this and that, and like, we're using it. So other people, you know, would like it too. Like, so we did our, um, a picnic mat and we've got some sunnies and, you know, hats and just sort of all your outdoor gear that it's <laughs> all the good trying stuff. to be that one, one stop shop. Yeah. Just to, to make it easy. And like, talking about the developmental benefits of playing outdoors and just the adventures of outdoors, can you maybe just go through what you think that they are overall? For, so, for yeah, absolutely. The, the sun, like it, it's getting vitamin D. It's got so much health benefit. So looking at yeah, your bone density and, you know, um, yeah, like so decreasing any bone bone problems, I guess, that they might have later in life. That vitamin D is so, so important. Um, you know, decreases affect our heart disease and diabetes and cardiovascular health, um, you know, issues just, yeah, just by getting them outside. And one of the best things that I know, you know, you think, yeah, get, get them outside, get the, the vitamin D into them, right? And they'll, they'll be tired and everything. But what sunlight actually does, it's got a hormone called melatonin. And that we sort of call it, it's this sleepy hormone. So it might not necessarily make them sleep through the night, but it can kind of help them get a bit drowsy sooner. So that's why it's also really good to get them out and about in that sunlight. So, you know, you know that your, your, your night routine, because that'd be a little bit easier given the fact they've got a bit of vitamin D, um, they've got, yeah, the melatonin in them. It's going to kind of kick in to make them a bit drowsy and hopefully make bedtime sooner. Because I know common misconception can be, get them outside, get, they'll get tired. Yes, they do, 100%. But also there's that other effect too of, you know, the hormone um, melatonin that they are exposed to during that sun that sun play I guess too so yeah. why not get them outside <laughs> and um I've, I've, there's been a recent study also um we just recorded a an interview just um recently that the um people um who have contracted COVID if they had higher levels of vitamin of vitamin D in their system they actually their symptoms were nowhere near as severe as what someone who had lower levels of vitamin D so it's just a, more just a you know one of those uh, trivia quick things. Yeah. I know, it's incredible yeah. yeah so for everyone Fantastic. i think it's really important for us to have more vitamin d but overall i've done yeah. some research and have a few sort of on my list as well i'd love to chat to you about so the first one is the development of gross motor skill development and of course as a pe teacher you would know all about that but yeah. an outdoor environment provides children with you know the space that just they need to be able to practice big movements or big motor skills such as you know running jumping galloping skipping and hopping so it's really really great for their gross motor skills um as i said as a pe teacher you would know more so than anyone else about that <laughs> uh, and of course the next one of course is balance and coordination so you know when playing outdoors kids um can sort of be exposed to uneven surfaces and um bumpy sort of you know, surfaces mm. and even sand can be so- soft and slippery and there's going to be slopes or hills that you're going to be going up and down on your adventures and obstacles um, and things 
to negotiate around like rocks and gardens and, and, and all of these things, of course, we know are built into play equipments in early education centres. So all of these situations will help challenge the child to balance um, a lot more when they're sort of playing inside and just sort of help their, their muscle strength. And talking about strength, the next one is grip strength as well. And having stronger shoulders and arms and hands can um, help children to have, um, you know, the strength and control um, once again, with fine, fine motor stuff, but even with riding and using scissors and that sort of stuff. So initially, mm. what are your thoughts on those? Oh, I've got more, but I just wanted to know your thoughts as, a, as an ex-PE teacher on those sort oh, of yeah. muscle strength things. Coordination is, yeah, so important. Like everything reverts back. As you say, the fine motor, the, the gross <laughs> motor, it all comes into coordination. Um, yeah, in coordination skill there. So it really is one of those yeah, fundamental motor skills that is like at the top of the as list. well um yeah to make sure that they're covering that because like you know we want our little people to be active they're doing their sports and you know stuff like that on the weekend when we can get back into it right so and coordination is almost a cornerstone of everything you're going to be doing yeah. um so yeah building up that coordination of kids like we were just out at a park before and um tan was more keen about just walking along a log you know that takes coordination and it um to be able to balance her you know balance herself have her arms out while she's doing that and it's just stuff that it just happens you know she wouldn't be able to do that inside at home like suddenly she's you know up high she's got a log she's got to climb on she's working the balance and it's Different just that, challenges you know, and obstacles and it, they could never experience indoors yeah yeah opportunities Absolutely. everywhere like and like I said I was just at a, an oval just with a, a friend and there was a yeah a um a log there and then the kids were and there was a like a clubhouse with a baseball um club and the kids they just played going up and down the stairs like they were running up and down the stairs and around like this little circuit and then balancing on the log it's like there wasn't even play equipment or anything there it was like they just found you know <laughs> kids are very creative beings they they find stuff to do like essentially we just had an oval as well and then they found they other find things it. To climb on and, and you know it was good they're outside they're 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 you know socializing there was a, another little friend there as well you know small social distancing if that's the thing with kids um and yeah but like i think the yeah coordination that yeah the fine and growth really motor skill it's so important and you you know you 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 really want to expose them to as much early on as you can as possible. i see 100%. it like yeah yeah because I, I work a lot with the older kids so i kind of get sometimes you know the kids that you can tell like they haven't had that um exposure early on uh and they you know they automatically what always hurt my heart was they've already set in their mind like oh, i'm not good at pe so I'm not going to try it. It's like, no, well, you can still, you know, you can definitely still do your best and always try, but sometime along the way, you know, it comes with that mental psyche, I guess they've made up their mind, oh, I'm never going to be good at that. But it, it's not but the, the earlier we can introduce these skills and yeah, this opportunity positive to be experience. better. Yeah. And then also um, as, a, as a PE teacher, you'd probably agree with the fact that it can help with attention and behaviour. You know, children, as we know, are hardwired to move, as you just saying with your kids. Oh. Um, <laughs> and so they, you know, generally they, can, they find it hard to sit still and just to concentrate. So, you know, giving um, children a good dose of physical activity, um, you know, you might find that their attention and behaviour can improve because they've just burnt off all their energy. Have you found that at all? Yeah, there's yeah, been heaps of studies done um, on that saying, you know, looking at different um, uh, being outside or like particularly in nature when you're really feeling, you know, the what Earth's got to got to offer. I guess if you can say, yeah, you know, out in nature, it does have better um, benefits for yeah, focus and attention. Um, yeah, for kids in the classroom. And whenever I could, if I was doing like PE theory or whatever, I'd try and get them outside. Like we just go sit on an oval and do our class out there. Oh, and I the kids that. kind of, yeah, they kind of think like, oh, this is this is really cool. Like they actually, you'd think they'd run away and they would just go and play, but they're actually, they did focus. Like, you you know, you kind of pick and choose sometimes your, your classes that you, you would do it to. Um, but, and then kids bike, you wouldn't do it every class, obviously. But, you know, just that thing to break it up and yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so get them get them outside, sitting on the grass, and yeah, um, yeah, and break it up because yeah, uh, it's just so and, important to and, uh, get them. Overall, out it's really great for like creativity and problem solving too. I hear that the outdoor environment can be considered a blank canvas with lots of opportunity for creative play and 
problem solving as well. So, you know, sticks can become fishing lines or swords or walking sticks, or like you said before, like a balance beam or something as well. Mm. Um, so, and even a long spoon for storing mud, a stick can be lots of different things or mud, mud pies. I remember making mud pies and, um, you know, all of those fun things. So, you know, the, the options are really endless as well for creativity. What do you think about that? Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. And seeing it with like Tana, so my four-year-old, she's so creative. Like the oh, the game that they were playing before, they had Elsa. They had an argument over who was Elsa, who was Anna to start with. Um, and then one of them was they agreed. One of them was Elsa. Then I think one of them was a fireman. And they were running around up and down these ladders, and yeah, just the creative play. I could see it though. It was so real, and they were going to these games. She was using her powers. Like, whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> and it was just like it was going for it in their in their mind and then yeah the logs be. they were like the castle and it was just it was just brilliant watching it as a parent seeing that and then yeah just giving them that opportunity to just be creative um it's i wild. think and yeah turn yeah turn like we make out the front of our house there's like a bird bath and neighbor has a bird bath and we play with them they've got similar age kids and they do like a big like a witch's stew like they get all the little flowers little bits of grass and they oh, you know cool. make their own witches around the stew and yeah just that yeah it's an object it's a flower but no that's a worm like you know that changing the thing of what they're kind of doing and it's yeah it's so important for their um their development yeah I think. Um, great examples. <laughs> and, yeah. and the, the, next, <laughs> Good the next thing is, is risk taking as well. You know, there's no better place for a child to learn um, than outdoors and, and, and taking risks and, and learning the consequences of risk taking uh, than during outdoor play. And of course, when a child climbs up a slippery slope or up a tree or maybe even onto a trampoline, um, they're learning about the risk um, associated with that. And uh, I mean, I, I personally think this is better learnt with um, your supervision and under uh, parental supervision. Um, and when your child is younger, as you just said earlier, um, as a result of taking risks when playing outdoors, then when they're older and, you know, for example, when they're allowed to drive a car. So I'd love to know mm. just your thoughts on this, this point overall. I, yeah. I think having a, a controlled environment, obviously, you know, where you can, they're, they're safe, I think, but it is important. I know Tan, she's at that real stage being four years old, like pushing that independence. She's like, I want to do this on my own now. Let me do it. Let me do it. And if she falls, we'll have a little bit of a cuddle. And I guess the always just over and not letting her ever try. And yeah. that confidence, they're going to take that to school, right? And, you know, we want to grow confident kids that, um, you know, that, and, and also they're going to, you know, speak up when things don't feel right. Like if you've got a confident kid, they're going to be, yeah, be, be able to I guess talk for themselves and hopefully down the track when something's not right be like oh no actually I don't think that's the right way to do that or I think someone might get hurt if we do this like it's building that whole yeah that whole um holistic approach of you know raising humans which you know it's a it's an interesting it's an interesting task isn't it (laughs) (laughs) all we can do is guide them (laughs) yeah and of course the last but not least of course is just the fitness and health which we know you know all of the physical activity your child does when outside to help improve their strength their fitness uh, their bone density like you were just saying as well and just their overall health and well-being so the, the really when you dissect it all there's so many layers and there's there's so much that the children benefit in just being outdoors much more and um you know product like, like i was saying products like yours that give parents the opportunity to be able to make that easy for them to be able to get kids outdoors is just um it's really inspirational as well but I'd love to know from your perspective, why do you think it's so important to nurture an adventuring spirit with children just in general? I think, you know, as a kid growing up, they're my best memories and I just want to be able to pass them on to my kids as well. Like you, you know, so much of your childhood, you, you probably won't remember, but you remember the times you went camping or you went to the snow and you, you know, those are the times that are just so important and you do nurture. Um, so I think that's, yeah, that's what we're sort of all about is really creating those great experiences so that then it's the, that sustainability thing, right? So that they have those awesome experiences and then they're going to pass that on to their kids and then Bob's your uncle, sustainability, right? So just kind of keep the going. Whole, yes, so, pass it down. Con- yeah. Continuing on from that, you know, we published your article and I just wanted to acknowledge that. Uh, and the title of it, of the article is four tips for outdoor adventuring with infants and toddlers. Now for someone who hasn't read the article yet, can you please just tell us a little bit about the article and just the overall inspiration for the piece? So we basically wanted to yeah, reach out to get our message out that, you know, um, 
we want to create adventurous families, you know, and have the right gear to kind of get out there. And, and basically a lot of people um, believe, you know, when you become a parent, you know, life's on hold. And we just sort of wanted to do an article to say, no, it's not on hold. You know, we've got some gear that can help you get out and about because we know you love adventure and we want you to be able to share that with your kids too. So why not bring them both, bring them both together, kind of marry them in um, and yeah, write a good article about yeah, how to get, get out and about with your, your family and your, your, awesome. um, your, yeah, your kids. So making it as easy as possible just to grab the gear and go, I guess. And, and one thing like involving them in the process um i think is really important, important too. As well. so yeah giving them a little bit of responsibility um like i know with tan she's got a little backpack that she'll you know she'll pack a water bottle and, and um a snack and stuff like that in too um to make sure if you're giving that responsibility make sure you know you do just do a quick little double check that they've got their water bottle in their hat so it's kind of you know two main um things in there but also with even chase like he knows now put his little his water bottle in our backpack so involving them in that experience and getting out of the house in, I guess, a positive way means, of okay, course. we're leaving the house. Everyone's happy. It's not a stressful situation. <laughs> That's kind of what we're all about. And they like having their little job, I think, I love um, that. for when they are yeah, leaving the house too. So, yeah. And in the article, you share four tips to inspire parents to help instill a love for the outdoors um, in young children. So I'd love to just go through just briefly those with you now. Um, and the first one is about um, making um, I guess outdoor activity a priority. So I just wanted to maybe just expand on that a little bit. Yeah. So yet yeah, in we have busy weeks, right? So you know, by the time you've got when you know life does go back to normal, um, you've got you know kids are in daycare or whatever you know during the week or school, so you might only have weekends um, to kind of make your priority area the priority time to get out and about with your kids, and also if you want to involve dad in the process or your partner in the process too. Um, so just booking in that time where it's like, you know, a non-negotiable, obviously you've got a weather dependent, right? But making that time to say, okay, this is priority no matter what. Uh, we're getting out. We're going to have a, everything all ready to go the night before. Um, and let's go out on our adventure. It's priority for this day to get the kids out, have an awesome experience um, and, yeah, have a lot of fun together. So just, yeah, you're almost booking in that time, I guess, to say this is what we're going to do, make it priority and get out and go. So just reiterating, the first point is start early and make regular outdoor play a priority. The second point is equip yourself with go anywhere kid friendly gear. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so having gear that I guess is going to work with you and it's actually going to help you on your adventure um, and be, I guess, a part of the, the family the family adventure. <laughs> um, so we that's how we sort of base the design of our um, adventure nappy backpack that we knew we'd have all the features in there um, that you would need for sort of a lot of different situations like travel, traveling, you know, through airports, having passport pockets and having wet dry pockets for um, going, you know, to the beach and whacking the kids clothes in there, um, having separate nappy storage for, you know, um, cleanliness um, issues and stuff like that and water bottle pockets, um, particularly one on the side. So also, so water is always at the forefront of your mind. So of are you going to drink it more? Yeah. And then kids, yeah, and then the kids know where it is too. So it's, you know, it's, you know we all need to drink more water. So it's always, in, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's always there for them. So having those sort of pockets externally was really important to us. And, and the main part that I think makes our bag really cool, that um, V pocket on the front, like a pack and stuff pocket. And that was purely designed because Tana has this little um, unicorn um, teddy, right? A little flat thing with a head. And that was like her thing forever. And that was her little settling thing. So that would always be the last thing that left the house, um, you know, with us before we went. So I had to just have a pocket. I could just stuff it in. I could see it there. Um, and you could kind of just, you know, just put it in and then go. So everything that was designed about um, this Adventure Nappy backpack was purely based on, you know, my experiences as, as a mum. I guess so um, and we wanted this bag to be rugged obviously and it's a water resistant so if it gets rained on if it gets um, snow or whatever it's, it's gonna okay be <laughs> as well. yeah so, so, so that, what do you think yeah. parents should look for in, in an adventuring bag then um, so yeah something that is um, like a, a water resistant shell it would be really important so you don't want to worry about getting um, your stuff wet, particularly if you have like an iPad or, you know, if you're traveling, you've got an iPad in your, or a computer in your bag, having a pocket for that too. Mm -hmm. You know, you do have quite valuable stuff in there if you are traveling. So making sure it's water resistant, I would say too. Um, 
and it has some security sections for you know for yeah for passports and also we've got um the yeah, RFID protection so um to preventing the card skimmers so there's a pocket in there that would block any card skimmers that were trying to steal your identity um or information you know on a holiday that would be horrible you know someone steals all your cards too so having little, little I guess techie features like that you know to bring into our modern day life is also <laughs> good but hey at the end of that it is still a, a nappy bag too so we've got all the nappy storage and and having enough nappies um, in your bag that you don't want to have to cut your adventure short just because you're like, oh, no, I've only got two nappies left. So-and-so just done a massive tsunami. Let's, you know, that's going to take up one nappy. Um, and I've only got one left. No, I still want to be out for another couple of hours. So we want to have enough um, storage in the backpack that you can stay out all day and you don't even have to worry about it. What a great idea. So, I think we the, so yeah. plenty of internal pockets, including easy access pouch at the front, like you said, is really important. So a separate nappy, nappy compartment to maintain hygiene, which is really important throughout the day, of course, like you just said, just depending how many times you change your nappy um, on your adventure. Um, water repellents is really um, important to have that material to protect against um, sun shower or a downpour if you're out and about and it, it is raining and wet dry compartments to keep things fresh and organised and a washable wipe clean lining as well within the the bag itself would you say those mm. things are all, all pretty important yeah and comfortable as well like I know when I was designing it I'll speak to the manufacturer I said okay so this is the sort of strap design that I want what's the most amount of foam padding that I can actually put in like we're designing a bag for parents to be out for a good couple hours right and quite you know carrying a decent load as well um so it needed to be comfortable um as well yeah parents could actually yeah could do that so that's why we have like little chest straps and um stuff like that in it too just to make it sit a bit better on on your back so that's, that's why well. I said at the start we've taken a lot of inspiration more from your outdoor adventure brands um than particularly looking at your, your baby brands so, as well and yeah. and talking about um we, you mentioned before about involving uh, involving kids in the preparation you know as we know kids thrive on modeling their behavior of their parents um and seeing you know you as a parent packing your bag um you can begin to teach kids i guess the sense of responsibility um with their own as well so i guess you know any other points that you've got to share about how parents can best involve an infant who maybe is a little bit too young to carry a backpack is it's about sort of keeping their hands busy on the trek and being outdoors with you know sun smart activities or a walking stick or something like that what are your thoughts yeah absolutely um yeah, a little um, walking stick or I don't chase love picking flowers. Can you pick the, the most beautiful flower you can find, you know, give me a flower or something like that. Just to involve them in, in the, the nature experience. So I think with Chase, he's, he loves, um, yeah, he'll put his water bottle in the side pocket. Um, and also I make sure, can you get your hat for me? And he'll put his hat in. Um, they're kind of his little two response. He's only two, but he's a little two responsibility, responsibility um, bits that he puts in where Tan, she... She quite often, she just, just, you know, offload her stuff in my bag too. Um, <laughs> but, but um, yeah, she'll also have her own little, little backpack too. And I guess a, a point on that is if they do have their own bag, make sure it's, you know, it's not too heavy and it's age appropriate for them to be able to carry it. And you don't put too much um, you know, you, stuff in there as well. Yeah, and that it can't carry it. Then, yeah, then they're like, hey, mum, you need to carry my backpack. So then suddenly you've got two things to carry. That's not what we're trying to achieve here. So make sure, you know, and that's where giving them, the responsibility of them packing it themselves is like, oh no, you know, you're you're packing it. This is your bag. You're responsible responsible for it wherever you put it down or whatever. Yep. You got to make sure it. Teddy's coming along, and so, that's yep, that's the most important. Yeah. Thing about. <laughs> um, yeah. The next point as well is tear up the itinerary and embrace unstructured play. Now, as we know, the government have a, ha a heap of different health recommendations. And in particular, for children aged one to five, they specifically specify that play should allow children to do a whole heap of different things, being practice a range of different movements and use their imagination, experience a variety of play spaces um, and set up their own sort of play areas and feel empowered when and however they can so everything that we've spoken about today with parents getting their kids outdoors and encouraging more outdoor play pretty much covers everything that the government regulations are actually saying to do so as the point in your article states parents should really just tear up the itinerary and just get outdoors and just embrace that unstructured play and just enjoy the the fresh air don't you think 100 percent. yeah getting out outdoors is the best and 
you know, and it, you never know where your adventure is going to go. You think that you're going to go one way and then suddenly something happens. Like, okay, all right, let's go the other way. And, and they have an amazing time. Um, you know, quite often sometimes when you don't, yeah, as you say, unstructured play, when you don't have plans, it's like when they have the best experiences too. And, and that's something is like when we become um, parents, you know, particularly parents who always love traveling before kids, you can't come at it the same way that you would travel when you didn't have kids. That yeah. makes sense. Like, kids you know got to factor in nap 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 times and um yeah they, they need their downtime as as well and you can't do a million different things in one day you know jam-packed day full of itinerary the kids isn't going to handle it. it's going to be a horrible experience so what i sort of say is just have one activity that you're going to achieve you know during that day on your holiday or whatever put everything into it you know factor around keep their nap times and everything um as you know usual as possible because once again they're in you know they don't know you know they're in a unfamiliar environment too yeah um, so keeping you know to your routines and stuff can be good but yeah just yeah embracing what what you know whatever happens on your travels and just roll with it and, and i think brilliant. you know overall the more exposure the infants toddlers and just children have overall to exploring the wonders of you know the outside world uh as we just said and have discussed today are widely beneficial and will spark their cooperation and enthusiasm. And I guess the aim of the game is to give them just some sense of control and establish a positive association with all your outdoor expeditions. So once again, I think your products actually really do that. But for anyone watching and listening today, how would you guess you summarize your key messages? So we are, um, uh, our, our mission is we're creating a um, adventurous um, fun mums and dads that are building their strong connections with their kids through mm -hmm. adventure, play and travel. So that's kind of, I guess, our, our mission and our mantra. Um, and that's every time we create a new piece of gear, we're like, okay, is this going to hit the mark there? So um, yeah, so basically we just want to have awesome experiences with our kids. So we're actually about to launch um, a Kickstarter campaign for our adventure baby carrier. So this is a baby carrier um, backpack that you put bubs in. So I, I started to um, realize that there weren't many carriers out there that also had good stories. Like I have a big um, hiking carrier, but it's just massive and I'm quite, quite small. And um, so I wanted to design something that was for um, yeah, small and compact, lightweight, but also had good storage. You could pop bubs in there. So they also had a good view um, of the adventure and what was going on. Quite Because quite often when we go to the zoo or places like that, sometimes the banisters are all quite low and the little one actually misses out if they're not quite up for being out of the pram and walking around on their own yet. They miss out on the action. So having bubs up high um, would actually help them yeah, yeah, get in more of the action. So that's actually really exciting. A Kickstarter campaign is launching on the... Um, on October the 19th. Um, so yeah, you definitely want to keep in, in touch with what's going on there. So yeah, jumpsea.com.au will have a lot of the information there. Awesome. And we'll have those links in the show notes as well. Awesome. Thanks Thank for you. sharing that. And if anyone's got any questions and or want to find out more about Jumpley products, whereabouts can they find you guys in? Yeah. So our website is jumpley.com.au um, and Instagram is at jumpley.au and same as Facebook um, at jumpley.au. Um, and you can always email me, tiffany at jumply.com.au, um, yeah, to, to reach out um, that way. Awesome. And we'll have all of those links in the show notes. I've really loved chatting to you today, um, and I've definitely learned a lot as well. <laughs> so thanks for your time, Tiffany, and all the very best of luck um, with, with the business, and no doubt you are going to sort of help make a difference to so many different um, families and children's lives around the country and, of course, overseas. So congratulations. And well done again. But thanks again for your time. It's been great chatting with you. Take care. Thanks. Thank you so much. Okay, bye.